What's up, guys? Matt Brown here for PlayPicks.com and TheLines.com. Going to talk to you about this Monday night game between the Browns and the 49ers. What a fun game we have here on Monday night. Before we get going, guys, please subscribe to the page. Please like this video. and Please let us know in the comments how you're going to go about playing this game. All the content on this channel is free. Obviously, everything we have over at The Lines is free. Everything we have at PlayPix is free. So all kinds of free information. So you'll, get, you'll be the first to be updated if you're subscribed to the page. And we really appreciate the support along the way. Only been doing this about a year. And to have as much support as we have, we really appreciate. So uh, trying to continue to get this number to grow and grow and grow throughout the course of the season head over to the lines.com you can see if you come up here to nfl clicked on click on mnf you will be on the monday night football page you can take a look here we got the little odds feed here and we have a breakdown of the game so be sure and take advantage of that all right let's take a look at this game here guys um browns and 49ers this thing opened at three and a half but as we sit let's look over here at DraftKings, sitting at five and 47 right now 195 on the money line and 240 for the 49ers on the money line over in pennsylvania over here at the FanDuel book over here in pennsylvania they're sitting at five as well 47 and a half in this one, 196 for the Browns if you want to play the money line, 230. We can actually take a look if we go over here to DraftKings. And this is something if you haven't taken advantage of, you can. Uh, there's a tab up here that also says stats. And if you click on betting trends, you can g- come down here and you can actually take a look at how the uh, how the lines have, have kind of moved here. You can see opened at three and a half about a week ago. It moved to three, kind of toggled between three and three and a half there for a while. Then we see this massive move about a week ago to four and then all the way down uh, touch touch five down here three days ago, then gets bet back to four, gets all the way to five and a half even earlier on Sunday and then now back to five right here. We've seen this total open at 46 and a half, got all the way up to 48 and a half, then back down to 46, and now as we sit at 47. So again, if you just click on the little stats tab, you can kind of follow the where this where the spread and the total has been over at DraftKings anyway. Pretty neat, something that you can, if you were just wondering where these things might have opened up at and uh, how they have moved about the the uh, time that since they've been out. Pretty cool. Weather, low 80s, high 70s-ish, no rain, a little breezy. It is San Francisco, a little breezy. Well, Santa Clara, I should say, but it is a little breezy, 10 to 15 mile ish type wind, something like that. Shouldn't really affect anything all that much. But if you're worried about it, something to keep uh, track of as we go there. Browns notes here. Uh, one of the most confusing teams in the NFL to me so far. You're looking at a team that was blown out by the Texans at home. Then they beat the Jets on the road. Then they lose at home to the Rams. And then they go on the road and blow the doors off of the Ravens and actually look like one of the better teams in the NFL in doing so. So really confusing team so far for me. The 49ers, this team's coming off of a bye right here. They are undefeated, but they are undefeated against a pretty weak schedule so far. Bucks, Bengals, and Steelers. And, of course, this is the Big Ben-less Steelers there and that defense that ranks about 20th in the league and we know how bad the uh, Bucks and the Bengals are as well as far as defense goes injuries in this one and I'll click back over here if you want to take a look at this oh also on this odds feed you can toggle between New Jersey and Pennsylvania if you want to and see how the the odds may differ between the states there but I'll scroll up if you want to read along here a little bit As we go on the Brown side, Jarvis Landry did clear concussion protocol, so he's going to be good to go in this game. Uh, uh, Corners Greedy Williams and Denzel Ward are both questionable. Now, you remember both these guys sat last week. They still played really, really well against the Ravens team. Questionable, don't know if these guys are going to suit up, but again, you'll know 90 minutes before game time whether or not they're going to go. Of note as well, the Browns get back Antonio Callaway, wide receiver that's been suspended for the first four weeks of the year on the 49 Niners side here, D Ford is questionable. Uh, looks like they're going to get running back Tevin Coleman back if that changes how you look at this team at all. But really, Matt Breda filled in really admirably uh, in the backfield there. But if anything, it gives them more depth and they certainly can kind of rotate now and keep a fresh guy going in there. Uh, reminder just as well, left tackle Luke uh, Joe Staley out for multiple weeks, uh, not going to be playing on the line for this 49ers team here on the offensive side of the ball. I'll continue to scroll up a little bit more for you there. Brown's offense averaging 22.3 points per game, averaging 380.3 yards per game, 6.2 yards per play for this team. They've passed on 61.8% of plays and only run the ball on 38.2% of the plays. So you can see a very pass heavy team 
so far now they were trailing a ton in that first game to the Titans they were getting their blow, doors blown off there uh, for a little while so they did have to go to the air a little bit more and that one 13th graded pass block unit according to pro football focus ninth best run blocking unit according to pro football focus so in the top 10 of run blocking and basically in the top third of the league there for the pass blocking unit as well they are converting 32.7 percent of third downs they have the number 24 ranked offense according to DVOA however on the 49ers side of the ball here and I will continue to scroll down here uh, is averaging 32 points per game on the 49ers side, averaging 421 yards per game, 6.3 yards per play. They've run on 56.7% of plays this year. That is most in the NFL. So they have been very run heavy. Of course, they've played one fewer game than one less game than everybody else. So they're, they've only played three games. They passed on 43.2% of plays. Seventh best pass blocking unit, according to Pro Football Focus. Tenth best run blocking unit according to Pro Football Focus, converting 48.5% of their third downs, number six overall ranked offense, according to DVOA. I'll flip over here if you want to take a look at what's going on at FanDuel in Pennsylvania. Pace in this one, Browns 25th, 49ers 18th in seconds per play. I expect some no huddle stuff going on here as well. We've seen the Browns kind of take to that in spurts where they'll go in no huddles or whatever. So even though they're 25th of seconds per play, they'll kind of make up on that with some of these other things. So honestly, I think this is probably more of a, a, a kind of a neutral pace game as opposed to pace up or pace down. I might even see a little no huddle from the 49ers as well in this thing on the defensive side of the ball for the Browns averaging. Uh, they're allowing 22.8 points per game. They are rated 22nd in uh, defense by pro football focus. Number eight ranked uh, pass defense, uh, number seventh ranked pass defense DVOA, number eighth uh, ranked run defense DVOA. They are allowing uh, 49ers on the other side of the ball here. 49ers averaging 18 points per game allowed. They are number four rated defense according to Pro Football Focus. They are the number two rated overall defense DVOA. They are the number two rated pass defense DVOA, and they're the number six rated rush defense DVOA. So you can see this 49ers defense, and everybody thought coming into the season that this 49ers defense was going to be much improved. I don't think people thought maybe this much, but again, maybe I know DVOA factors in competition and whatnot, but we, we do need to remember who they have played so far this year. All right, so let's take a look here and let's start with the total. It's sitting at 47 here at DraftKings, 47 and a half over here at FanDuel. So let's make a case for the under. So if we were going to play the under, we would head over to FanDuel so we get that extra half point here. So a case for the under. It, it really, one of the things could just be that the 49ers defense, I mean, this is for sure, that they're just really, really, really good and are able to completely shut down this Browns offense. I mean, if you look at who the Browns have played so far this year, I mean, yeah, they've played some pretty decent teams, but certainly no teams. I mean, look, we thought the Rams defense was going to be great. Well, we've, we've seen what people can do to this Rams defense so far. You look at these other teams they played. So, I mean, for me, maybe this is just one of those things where they could be absolutely shut down by this 49ers team. Further, the 49ers most run heavy team in the NFL. So you look at this, the weakness of the Browns, if you look at the two units, they're much better against the pass than they are against the run. So maybe that would lean to the 49ers running even more, which is something they've been very prone to do so far this season. And as we know, when a team just runs, 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 runs the clock, uh, good for unders as well. Of course, the Niners, as we mentioned, get back Tevin Coleman. That might even make them want to run even more. So that could be another th way. And then, of course, also the Niners haven't really faced a real defense so far this season, and the Browns are going to be the first real defense they play. So while they have all these great st statistics so far, maybe they get in here against this Browns team and aren't able to move the ball at all so that's where if you're looking at the under here if you want to make a case for the under in this thing 47 and a half uh you would head over to FanDuel, and that how that's how maybe we could get to the under in this thing case for the over so if you wanted to go to the over you'd head over to DraftKings to get uh the extra half point there at 47 um maybe for case for the over could just be the browns maybe have finally figured something out here you know maybe they went and it took a little while to gel. They had some new players come into town. Obviously, Odell being the very, very big one that's come into town. Nick Chubb really kind of getting him involved, as we've seen over the last couple of games, getting Nick Chubb really settled in there in the backfield. And we got to remember, 
I mean, at the end of the day, Baker Mayfield just hasn't made a ton of starts in the NFL. I mean, he only started really the last, you know, uh, several games of, of last season and then the first four this year. So it's not like this is like a super seasoned quarterback or anything. So uh, maybe Baker Mayfield just needed a little time to kind of really get things going as well in this season. Uh, maybe the Niners team is for real. That's another way this thing could be over. Maybe this is just a, a two offenses that are going to come out here. And despite the fact that these two defenses are all right, uh, they have their way with these defenses. So uh, maybe the Niners are actually good as well. There's also a very real chance of some defensive game changers in this game, which also really helps with the overs. If you get a strip sack, if you get a block to anything, if you get some picks, if you get short fields, all of these things are things that can really, really help overs get there uh if you don't have to go as long to score obviously there's more points to be had so uh also if greedy williams and denzel ward are both out for the browns maybe this is an opportunity for the 49ers to try and pick apart the secondary uh you know listen as we said last week that didn't happen to be the case the ravens weren't able to take advantage of the fact that both those guys were out but who knows? Maybe this 49ers team is actually better than the Ravens pass game here. Maybe Jimmy Garoppolo would be able to take care of that. And then finally, another case just for the over would just be the fact that they're coming off of a bye. They've had two weeks to prepare for this Browns team here. So maybe they figure something out along the way and can put up a good bulk of the points to get us closer to that over anyway. And the Browns don't have to do as much of their part as well. Let's look at some player props here. If we want to talk about some of the player props in this game. Listen, first score for Nick Chubb is, I mean, as good a bet as you could possibly make. If you kind of look at how the Browns have been have been playing so far, once they get inside the 10, I think that they're not going to be messing around anymore. If you watch Freddie Kitchens just get absolutely roasted for the way he's been, he was coaching the red zone offense earlier in the season, then, uh, then they just really relied on Nick Chubb much more heavily last week. I think they're not going to mess around anymore down there in the red zone. Going to put the ball in Nick Chubb's hands. So uh, always, always a live bet if you wanted to get Nick Chubb as first touchdown. And of course, just overall to score a very, very high likelihood that uh, he gets in the end zone. One of the ones I think that kind of stood out to me here was also Nick Chubb receptions in this game. So if we come down to total receptions, they have him sitting at at three and a half but you're getting plus money here so two games this year he's got three receptions two games this year he's got four receptions so he's gone over twice he's gone under twice you're getting plus money here on the over in a game in which maybe the Browns are going to struggle just a little bit to move the ball and maybe this pass rush is going to get after uh, Baker Mayfield how do you kind of deal with those the pass rush you get the ball out of your hands really really quick sometimes that is to the to your check down guy which would be Nick Chubb and then sometimes I should design screens that would be to Nick Chubb as well so for me I'm kind of looking at the game plan here how I think this thing might work out and I think maybe since I'm getting plus money on the over three and a half he's already gotten there twice for me so far this year and I think the game plan against this 49ers defense and this pass rush could certainly lend to Nick Chubb getting a couple of more additional Additional catches as well so I'll take the plus money here not a big bet but just something that I was certainly looking at and the other one was looking right here at total interceptions I'm going to take the over for both of these guys listen Jimmy Garoppolo already has four interceptions on the year anyway and they've only played three games so that goes without saying and again this is the first real defense he's played all year long so uh, I don't think he's as accurate as as, as everybody uh, says here so yeah I'm going to go ahead and take the over with him and then Baker Mayfield look at the end of the day Baker Mayfield's got that Brett Favre to him, right? He's that gunslinger dude that likes to to kind of like try and make plays sometimes when he shouldn't. He's been picked in every single game so far this year. And with the way that this 49ers defense has been playing, I don't see any reason to think that that trend would not uh, continue here in this one. So I'll take the over here for both of these as well, that these guys are, are going to get picked. I think there's probably a likelihood that both of those guys get picked in this one as well. Let's talk about the sides and the total here. I'll go back to the game lines. We'll come up here. Let's start with the total. I do have a lean towards the under in this one at 47 and a half over at FanDuel. And listen, if this thing were to trickle up a little bit higher, if this thing were to get back to where it was, we saw it track that thing and it had gotten up to 48 and a half. It, maybe it was only just for a, a couple seconds over there on DraftKings. But if this thing trickles up, I mean, it is a standalone game and we know that the public likes to bet the over. Nobody likes to root for no points. They like to root for points. And so maybe the money comes in and gets this thing up to 48. Pray that we get it back, maybe back, get it back up to 48 and a half again. 
you might see me go ahead and make a play on the under here. I kind of look at it this way, right? San Francisco's red zone uh, offense has been absolutely atrocious, and that's against, again, against bad defenses. They've only scored a touchdown on 43% of their trips to the red zone so far this year, and this Browns defense, obviously a much better defense than they're going to play here. And again, I think this Brown, I think this San Francisco defense is legit. I think that they're going to confuse Baker Mayfield and them a little bit. I, th- I don't think they're going to be able to just have – their way here that said I think this total is kind of about right so I do lean to the under but I don't have a play on it just yet but as we get closer to kickoff I'll monitor it if it were to trickle up a little bit I think this would be something where I'd feel pretty good about taking the under here on the side uh, we're sitting at five at both places so it doesn't really matter where you want to where you want to grab this thing though I guess there is some juice over at DraftKings so uh, if you wanted to play the If you wanted to play the five on the 49ers, you'd head over here. And if you wanted to play the five on the Browns, uh, you're getting reduced juice actually over here. So um, can the Browns keep Baker Mayfield upright in this thing? Baker Mayfield throws uh, 78% of the time on target rate whenever he's throwing from a clean pocket. When he is being pressured, that plummets to 30%. So really, it's all about will Baker Mayfield have time to throw if he does Browns are going to succeed. If he doesn't, this thing could get pretty dicey here for this team. Browns rank fourth in the league in passes, gaining 15 yards or more in the NFL. So again, time to throw all those playmakers. Odell, you know, he's got Chubb out of the backfield. He also has Jarvis Landry. He's also getting Antonio Callaway back this week. Uh, Another pretty good third receiver option for the Browns there, for sure, especially since Rashard Higgins look like he's going to miss this game as well. And that's what you have to ask yourself. Can the Browns keep him clean? And if you think that they can, if you think that they will be able to, or if you think they'll be able to do it enough times, then I think you're heading towards the Browns in this one. Um, if you don't think that this is, if you think that this 49er team is just absolutely for real and this Browns team is all smoke and mirrors and can't put anything together consistently, uh, then, you know, I can see you going to the 49ers. I just think missing the numbers so, so badly at this point with it being three and a half for so long and then just this money pounding this thing up to five. I don't know if I could actually get there on this. Jimmy, like I mentioned, Jimmy G's thrown four picks in three games. And that's against far inferior competition here. The Browns fourth in the league in sacks. So he's going to face much more pressure than he has at at many times so far this season here. So um, I can I don't fault you if you want to take the 49ers here. Um, I wish you would have gotten it at a better number. But if you want to take it here at less than six, I guess I can't blame you if you believe this team is for real. I actually think the Browns might have figured something out here. Uh, full disclosure, I actually opened up a teaser on Thursday night with the Rams at plus one and a half. I wanted to get that up through the deal. I, I hate wasting those prime teaser opportunities. There wasn't really another opportunity this week at all for people who like to play teasers. There weren't any, you know, ones, one and a half, twos, two and a half point favorites. I mean, uh, underdogs uh, this week or any kind of those eight, eight and a half point favorites either to where you can like tease it through the sevens, the sixes and the threes. So I just went ahead and used it on, closed it out with the Browns. I did that earlier in the week. So actually that was when the number was at four. So I pushed it from four up to 10. So I didn't get through uh, any other, I only got through one real key number in seven there, but I did get through the six and I got it all the way up to 10, which gives me a little push equity. But um, so something that uh, I've already done. That said, again, that was back when the number was at four. This number's at five. As we saw through the history of this thing, it had touched five and a half. So if this thing keeps moving towards kickoff here, I might like get down some more cash here on the Browns, get invested at taking the plus money here. And I actually might sprinkle a little bit on the money line. I have a weird feeling that if the Browns play good in this game, you won't need the points. I think they probably just win it outright here. So uh, monitor this line here. And if you want to get involved in just the way that the lines are right now, if you wanted to take the plus five with the Browns, I totally understand that. I mean, listen, you're getting more than the field goal here. Do you think this 49ers offense is really going to be that explosive here? Do you think that this defense is everything that they've shown so far? Or do you think it's been, or, or do you think it's just been the inferior competition that they've played? in the Bengals which might be the worst team in the league in the Bucks that was the first game of the season where the Bucks made some absolutely head scratching decisions in that game and again the big binless Steelers as well at home and Mason Rudolph making like his first start 
in the NFL. So for me, I don't know. I, I haven't seen enough from this 49ers team here. I think that this Browns team has been a little bit more tested, and I think they've shown out that they can actually make some plays and, and win some of these games on the road. So I, uh, I like the Browns here with the points, and like I said, I feel like if they play well, they probably just win the thing. So I'll probably play the number here with the points and also sprinkle a little bit on the old money line as well and see if they can't get me an outright as well here. So guys, really do appreciate you watching the video. Thanks for everything. Uh, thanks for all the subscriptions and the likes and the, and the comments and everything like that. So please subscribe to the page. Please like this video. Please give us some comments if you appreciate everything we're doing. Again, everything is for free. So head over to lines.com. All the information is for free there. Head over to PlayPix. You can go to playpix.com slash bonus, which is probably in the little bar below, below me here. And if you want to sign up for any of the sports books, uh, the very best offers you can possibly get, free money, everything like that, free bets, all the different stuff like that. If you're over in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, wherever it might be. And if you can't do any of that stuff, there's DFS offers as well. So uh, you can take advantage of those things. So be sure and do that as well. Guys, we'll be back for Thursday night football this week. Really, really, really appreciate it. And we'll talk to you guys then.